Six months ago, I spent over $300 on merino wool socks because I wanted to film a video about the best affordable merino wool socks. But as I started testing them, I noticed something really interesting. Whenever I tried hiking for more than two days with either of these socks, I started to get sore spots on my feet. However, that isn't the case with my more expensive merino wool socks. So why is that the case? Why do only expensive merino wool socks don't get blisters? Well, it turns out that not all merino wool is of the same quality, and the cheaper manufacturers like to use the more affordable stuff. The two pairs of expensive merino wool socks that I already owned are the Darn Tough hiking socks, which cost $25 per pair, and the Silverlight hiking socks, which cost a whopping $33. Now, that's pretty expensive, right? You're probably thinking, why on earth would you pay so much for a pair of hiking socks? And that's exactly what I was thinking, which is why I purchased another nine pairs of hiking socks to see if I could find something more affordable that could do just as well. Over here, I'll show all the affordable socks that I bought and how much I paid for each one of them, but you'll find all the links to them in the video description. I've been testing them on various hikes and through hikes together with my girlfriend for the past six months. And although I do have to say that some some of them are pretty good alternatives, I would never use them on a through hike because I hate blisters. In regular wool, the diameter of each hair is between 30 to 40 microns, but in merino wool, it's between 16 to 24 microns because it's harvested from a different brand of sheep. Because of this, merino wool doesn't feel itchy on your skin because the hairs are so thin, they just bend whenever pressed against your skin. Merino wool also has improved thermal regulation properties, which essentially means that merino wool will keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And lastly, the thinner diameter allows the manufacturer to create a tighter fabric which doesn't move around when you wear it. But the thing that not a lot of people know is that not all merino wool is of the same quality. Good quality merino wool is usually thinner in diameter, ranging between 15 to 20 microns, and bad quality merino wool is usually larger, ranging between 20 to 24 microns. The good stuff costs more because it has better thermal regulation properties, it's softer, and you can weave it into a less saggy fabric. For example, Darn Tough uses only super fine merino wool, which ranges between 17 to 19 microns in diameter. When looking up close, you can clearly see that the Darn Tough and Silverlight socks are made from a much thinner yarn compared to any of these affordable merino wool hiking socks. Using just merino wool isn't really a good idea because it isn't very durable and it takes a very long time to dry. I've found that the best hiking socks are usually made from 40 to 60% merino wool, 40 to 60% nylon or polyester, and 1 to 3% elastane spandex or lycra. The merino wool gives the sock breathability, thermal regulation, and odor resistance. Nylon or polyester gives the sock more durability and greatly reduces its drying time. And elastane spandex or lycra, which basically is the same material, makes the sock a bit more elastic, which improves the fit. A few manufacturers also include real silver in the sock. For example, my silver light hiking socks are made from 5% silver coated yarns. Merino wool creates an environment that isn't very friendly for bacteria, so they aren't able to reproduce as quickly. But silver actively kills the bacteria, which is even better. And reducing the amount of bacteria within the sock is really important because number one, it will keep the sock for smelling fresh for much longer. But number two, the presence of bacteria greatly increases the chances of blister formation. From all the affordable hiking socks that I tested, only Kirkland and Omni Wool followed the same material composition. Blisters form from the sock rubbing against the skin of your feet, and this can be eliminated if the sock has a good amount of compression. I noticed that all the affordable socks that I tested tend to stretch out over time, but my Silverlight and Darn Tough hiking socks still have a really good amount of compression even after using them for hundreds of kilometers. This also ties into the fact that they're made from a thinner fiber merino wool, which just doesn't stretch out as much.
Blisters are most likely to form on your heel, on the ball area of your feet and on your toes. On my darn tough and silver light socks, you can clearly see that they've used a thicker fabric in these areas. But when you look at more affordable merino wool socks, they're mostly made from the same material all around the sock. In affordable hiking socks, usually in the area around your toe box, there's a lot of excess fabric, which will move around and will cause blisters to form. On my darn tough socks, there's almost no excess fabric there. Silverlight went one step further and designed each sock for each foot individually. If you find socks like this, they're much less likely to form blisters whenever you're through hiking. When I was testing these affordable hiking socks, I noticed that I didn't get any blisters when I was day hiking or on very short overnight hikes. I only started to get blisters when I was walking very long distances for a very long time with a very heavy backpack on my back. So if you're day hiking regularly, I would say that it's worth it to invest in a few pairs of affordable merino wool socks, which means that you can keep your expensive hiking socks only for when you will really need them. But if you'll be through hiking, you should only stick with good quality merino wool socks like the ones from Darn Tough, Silverlight or Smart Wool. If you want to purchase the Silverlight hiking socks, they were kind enough to give me a 15% discount code, which you can also use. You'll find it in the video description. From the nine affordable different hiking socks that I tested, there really are only three that I could recommend for day hiking. If you'll be day hiking in the summer, I would recommend getting the Fox River hiking socks, which come in a bundle of three pairs for $31, I believe. They're a bit more expensive than other cheaper hiking socks, but they do resemble good quality merino wool socks. They're made from 41% merino wool, and the fibers seem to be almost as thin as on my darn tough hiking socks. They also have padding around the toe box, the bottom of the foot, and the heel. But what I really like about them is that they have a lot of breathable fabric on top of the sock, which is really useful when you're hiking in the summer. The only downside is that the fabric seems to be stretching over time and there seems to be a lot of fraying happening on the fabric. For day hiking in the winter, spring and autumn, I would recommend getting the really cheap Omni Wool Merino Wool hiking socks or the Kirkland Merino Wool hiking socks. They do provide an okay amount of compression, they're both really warm and soft, and they're both made from around 60% Merino Wool. Of course, they aren't the most durable socks and they do get a bit saggy over time, but for day hiking, they'll do just fine. But one word of caution is that if you will be getting affordable merino wool hiking socks, they will develop holes much faster. For example, my ultra cheap Alvida merino wool hiking socks developed a hole just after wearing them for one or two weeks around the house. But my silver light hiking socks didn't get a single hole after through hiking 800 kilometers with them. And finally, I would also like to mention that getting good quality merino wool socks is only one part of not getting blisters. The other one is getting shoes that fit your feet perfectly straight out of the store and learning how to lace them correctly. But that's a completely new topic and this video has already been pretty long. If you like through hiking and hiking, subscribe and check out my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.